Uh, yeah, I'm going to speak about uh, laziness, in, uh, which is a, a very uh, normal uh, hot topic in functional programming. Uh, it's a lot less common in, uh, in an in imperative, in an object-oriented language like Java. So, uh, what do I mean with lazy evaluation? Lazy evaluation is just a, a different way uh, of uh, evaluating the uh, arguments that are passed to a middle. Okay? Normally what you do in Java is that you have to pass the argument to a middle, all the arguments are evaluated before being passed, uh, and then uh, the middle does its job. Okay? What happens with lazy evaluation? Uh, no argument is evaluated, uh, until the method really needs it. Uh, so, uh, to recap, uh, strict, strict programming, strictness, that is what Java does, that is what mostly the, the, the biggest part of, of, uh, of uh, object oriented and imperative uh, programming language do, is uh, uh, evaluating uh, ar uh, arguments regardless. Okay, so, doing the job, regardless if it's useful or not. So, while well, laziness is just uh, noting the things to do, and do them only when it's really, really necessary. Uh, and uh, if you think about this, uh, you know, laziness or, or even better, lazy evaluation is uh, in our uh, human nature. If you have kids, you know this. I asked to my daughter on uh, Sunday, Afternoon, are you done with, the, with your homework? And she said, Yes, Dad. Okay, show me the homework. Okay, 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 I'll do it. Okay, so that's, that's all, all, all this. Everything sorted out in your room? Yes, Dad, everything is okay. Okay, I'm coming to your room. Well, give me a minute. And so, you know, this is lazy evaluation, right? And uh, why, why Sophia, why my daughter Sophia, which, who by the way is there? Say hi, Sophia. <laughs> uh, so why why would I tell uh, Sophia is going to do that? Because it's logical. It, it, she's optimizing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's a, uh, yeah, really. It, it, it's, it's the most clever thing, it's the cleverest thing to do because uh, she uh, she's only doing the amount of work that is strictly necessary, no more. So this is what's and uh, in reality, yes, I say that uh, Java is a strict language, but uh, it cannot be, of course, totally strict. I, 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 I think that cannot exist a 100% strict language. So you have some uh, things in, in Java that uh, are less as well, like the, the premier operators, the ternary operator, of course, the uh, if else condition, the for loops, and uh, for the first uh, time in Java history, in Java 8 we also have uh, an API that, is, uh, uh, that has been designed with laziness in mind, which is the Java 8 streams. Okay? So, if you ask me if a totally language, uh, uh, a strict language could exist, I, I don't think so. You know, I mean, if this would be strictly evaluated, uh, both the left and, uh, and the right predicate of this uh, end will be evaluated regardless. And then you will take an appointed exception regardless of, of this check. So you cannot, you understand this kind of thing, right? And in reality, it's quite easy to use uh, uh, laziness uh, after Java 8, in, in Java 8 and after, okay? Uh, let's give a, a very simple example. I wanted to uh, create a method that uh, uh, does the same thing of, of the ternary operator. Okay, so here I'm using the ternary operator. Here, here I'm invoking this method, which is supposed to do the same thing. But for, of course, in this form, it is not doing the same thing. Why? Because uh, if you do this, only val one or val two will be invoked. If you do this, they will be both invoked, regardless of which one will be used inside the middle. So this is strict, right? But it's very easy to, to change this in a, in a, in a, a lazy uh, form. Uh, you just replace the argument with a supplier of those arguments, okay? And uh, you just do this, so this just because lambda providing the value, no, not the value itself. 
and uh, and you just uh, could get only on the uh, on one of the two suppliers. So one you are interested in it. Uh, in, 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 in the context of what you are doing uh, uh, regarding the value of your Boolean value. Okay? So, turning a uh, 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 strict, the, the normal strict evalu evaluation that uh, you are used to, to have in Java in a lazy one, it's pretty easy and, uh, and uh, Java it's syntax is pretty reasonable and, and uh, I guess it, it helps you to do that. It helps you to do that uh, uh, both under uh, API provider point of view, but even better under uh, uh, API user point of view. It's really easy for uh, for the user of your API to use this method. The, 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 it, it's not a big brain change, game change. You are just adding the, the parentheses and the arrow, that's all. Okay? And you have example of this in a uh, in, uh, common uh, framework now. Before uh, Java 8, you normally uh, do this in your uh, uh, tracing statement. You don't want, if you have a, a string that uh, uh, involves a lot of computation to be uh, uh, built, before passing it to the log, you, you really don't want to do this computation if you are not uh, in tracing mode, right? So, what you do before Java 8 mm -hmm. is this. You are obliged to do this if you want to avoid the, the evaluation of the string regardless, okay? Now, you can avoid the, the if. Why? Because you are not passing the you are not passing the string to the login tracing method, you are just passing a, a supplier of the string. It will be invoked by the framework if and only if the logger uh, framework is in tracing mode. Okay, so this very simple concept has been already used in, uh, in some uh, Java library that you use all day. Okay, okay. Uh, of course uh, there is a small price to pay because uh, uh, creating the lambda is not totally free, but anyway, the price is very reasonable compared to the the, the, the uh, amount of work that the Java virtual machine has to do to to to, to uh, compute to create that string every time, if, even when it's not necessary. Okay, so what I'm saying is that laziness is uh, is really the ultimate optimization uh, technique. Uh, there is nothing faster than not doing something at all, okay? And uh, I believe it is the only form of, of, of uh, performance optimi of optimization which is never predatory. Okay? Normally, you do a lot of uh, performance optimization even in point when uh, it's not really needed. But uh, using laziness, it's, I, as I showed, it's very easy sometimes and, uh, and uh, it's never premature optimization. Uh, as I said, the, the Java 8 stream API is a very specific case because it has been uh, the first uh, uh, API built in in the, in the JDK that uses uh, the concept of, uh, of laziness. Okay? Uh, we can uh, uh, see this in two different forms. First of all, uh, you have to notice that uh, what I'm doing here. Here I'm uh, having a potentially infinite stream, okay? And uh, of course, without uh, lazy evaluation, it's impossible to have something like that. You cannot have an uh, infinite list, an infinite array list, or, or a, a mesh map with an infinite number of keys. You cannot. But you can have a potentially infinite stream. Okay, and then, uh, and, 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 and this is the first way uh, in which lazy evaluation has been leveraged in this API. The second way are what uh, they call the intermediate evaluation. Okay, uh, those uh, map and filter method behaves exactly uh, like uh, Sophia when she has to do their own work. Okay, when you, so, when you say do the homework, she is not actually doing it. She is just saying, okay, done. And in reality, they are not doing it. They are just scheduling that operation. 
And all these operations are treated in reality only when you invoke a terminal operation, only when you are asking a result, only when you, when you are going to check if Sophia has done her, her homework really. Okay? So, uh, this implies that uh, the Java stream is not a data structure. Okay? Uh, it eventually wraps a data structure or a file system or a database connection, uh, but uh, it is just a, a blueprint of, uh, 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 of, of, of action that will be eventually executed when the terminal operating is called. So you are describing the operation that you want to do. You want to do a map, a transformation of value, you want to filter those values, but you are just describing those operations. You are not really triggering them un until you hit uh, a terminal operation. Okay. And uh, yes, of, of course, uh, you can do without laziness, more or less everything you do with laziness. Uh, but uh, the fact is that uh, some kind, uh, some sort of algorithm are, are better described and, 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 and implemented if you have some knowledge and some use of laziness. Uh, this is a very typical example. I want to uh, uh, find the list of the first 10 uh, prime number and it's really easy to describe this algorithm with a uh, a lazy and a functional and a declarative mindset. Okay? Of course you can achieve the same result describing step by step the imperative step that you, uh, uh, you have to perform to achieve the same result. But uh, it, it is much harder, it is much uh, more verbose and, and in reality it's a mess. Uh, and uh, I want to underline this. Uh, what laziness in particular and functional programming gives you is that uh, uh, a way to set, clearly separate the description of, of an operation to the point where that operation is treated. Okay? Uh, and uh, this also allows for a better separation of a, co of a concern, which is uh, a, a big, big winning point for the maintainability of your software. Uh, and I can give another practical example. Let's suppose that uh, you, you can guess what this does. This is a, a very imperative uh, uh, snippet of code, which is trying to print the... You have, a, you have a, a log file with some error, and this is trying to accumulate in this list the first of uh, 40 uh, uh, error in that log file. Okay, that's all. So it's just uh, iterating the errors line by line. Uh, it has a counter to, to check if it uh, reaches the, uh, the 14th one. Uh, and, uh, and that's it. Uh, I'm omitting the, the, the uh, uh, try catch stuff, the error management stuff, just, just for uh, simplicity. Okay? Uh, let's see the uh, lazy and functional and stream-based uh, uh, alternative, which is this one, okay? E yes, it is more uh, concise, but uh, it is, this is not the uh, only thing and not the main thing that I want you to notice about this code. <coughs> uh, as I said, the winning point here is the separation of codes. So you just have one place when the file is open and then traverse it, one place when the, the, log, the log statement are filtered, one place when the uh, uh, results are limited to the, only to the first 40, and one place when all the results are collected into a list. Okay? And if you compare the imperative version, all, code, all, all responsibility are scattered around, so it's much harder to maintain the first version. Okay, so cool, great. Now we know. Now we know that uh, laziness is great. We know that uh, when that streams are lazy. So uh, hold my beer. 
and uh, let's together try to uh, implement that uh, that algorithm to find the first and prime number. Okay. So this is a very first, uh, very very reasonable attempt. I just created a predicate that filters uh, a candidate number, saying uh, if it is prime or not by dividing it. Uh, from all the number from 2 to the square root of the, the candidate uh, and uh, it returns true or false based on the fact if any of, of the tested number against the candidate will return at 0 as, uh, as the rest of, uh, of a division okay and then I just use this uh, method returning a boolean as a, as a predicate which it is and I filter an infinite stream with this predicate and I limit the result to the first step. That's all. Very, very easy. Okay? But in reality, if you think about it, yes, this is this is easy, this is this works, but uh, but it's somewhat inefficient. Why is it, why is it inefficient? Because it's not keeping the memory of the uh, prime number that I found so far. Okay? If I'm checking if 11 is a uh, prime with this algorithm, I will divide it by 2, by 3, which is fine. But I will also divide it, try to divide it by 4, which is useless, by 6, which is useless. Because I know that those numbers are not prime by itself, by themselves. So I don't need to, to, to divide them uh, uh, to check if a candidate number is prime or not. Okay, so uh, this is a reasonable attempt, but quite inefficient. Let's try uh, a second. Uh, let's try a second uh, uh, approach. Uh, uh, what I did here is that I have two methods give me the head of the and the tail of the stream, meaning the first uh, item of the stream or the, 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 the all the remaining part of the stream, and uh, and I tried to implement this. Uh, think in a recursive way, okay? And this is a, another reason of all of them and has the advantage of keeping track of the number, of the prime number that I found so far. Uh, I will demonstrate this uh, immediately later. I will clarify how it works. But in reality, this doesn't work as we expect for two very evident reasons. First of all, uh, uh, I'm using, uh, I'm calling this head and tail uh, 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 operation, which internally are two terminal operation on the stream. Okay, and uh, if you you know that you can do this when you call a terminal operation on the stream, the stream is not. You can call anything else on it. You cannot keep a reference to the stream and call a different operation on the same stream. You will just get a runtime exception if you try. Okay. And the other problem, which is uh, 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 not related with uh, with uh, how the stream works, but with the fact that Java misses this evaluation, is that uh, this recursion will just uh, end up with, in an endless recursion because it's not lazy. We just end up in an uh, endless recursion. We just blow up your stack. And, uh, and uh, you will not get any useful result, okay? But what I want to let you notice is that this, the idea per se is totally fine. Uh, it just doesn't work be because of Java. But if you try to do exactly the same in Scala, it works perfectly, okay? Why? Uh, because uh, you have this, okay, this fancy operator, uh, I don't, I don't, I, probably there is also a, a, an alias with a, with a bit of doing the same thing, but anyway, this is the lazy string, uh, uh, string concatenation. So, with this lazy concatenation, uh, if you know Scala, you see that I'm, I'm using exactly the same idea of the previous slides, just as translated to Scala, and, and it, it works. You, you don't have to do anything else, okay? So uh, we have to, to do some more work to implement the same idea also in Java. So let's, let's first define uh, an head uh, list. So this list uh, has, a, has an int, which is the first item, 
and there's another meter that gives you the tail, which are all the items after the first. Uh, and then there's uh, just the other two meters, so one that uh, 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 return true or false, uh, saying if the list is empty or not. And uh, another one that uh, just filter this list with a predicate. Okay? So this is my definition of the head tail list. And then I can provide, provide a list implementation of this list. Okay? Why this is lazy? Because uh, it's not made by a heap and a tail. It's made by a heap and a supplier of a tail. Okay? So when you ask for the heap, you will be returned with the heap. When you ask for a tail, it will be returned, it will invoke the supplier, it will be returned with a tail, but the tail by itself, of course, is just another lazy list. And then uh, it will just have the first item evaluated, not the whole list. So every time you say uh, tail, you will get another list with only the first item evaluated. Okay? And then you can implement uh, uh, a filter method on this, uh, on this list like this, in a, uh, in a recursive way like this. Okay? And this is work because here I'm using this. Okay? Because uh, I, I, I'm not passing around the tail, I'm passing around the supplier of the tail. Okay? So, and at this point, I can finally uh, put my prime set to work. Uh, it works, as I said, in a recursive way. And, uh, and so, if I ask uh, the head, it will give me the number two. If I ask tail and then the heap, it will be, give me number three. If I ask two times state and then the heap, it will be the third prime number, which is five. Okay? So, what I'm doing is initializing this list uh, with uh, from, which is the number of, from where I'm starting. And, uh, and you see a supplier of from n plus 1, where from is, is, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, I put from somewhere, sorry. Uh, but anyway, from is just a, 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 a lazy, uh, sorry, from is the method itself, so. <laughs> I, 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 I drank a bit of beer uh, during lunch, it was, it was a good idea, so, so from is, is, is uh, okay, let's learn that, no beer anymore before I talk. Uh, the from is, uh, is, uh, is this uh, method through which I'm uh, lazily, lazily creating this list, which is made by the head and the tail, and the tail, of course, is a supplier of from the of n plus one. Okay, so this is a, a static, static factory method of this lazy list. So, uh, okay, and then you can use it this way. You have created this lazy list starting from two, and then uh, and then I told you as it goes, how it goes. Okay, but uh, probably it will be helpful to clarify how this works under the hood because it, I understand that it's not totally. Uh, not totally easy to get. Uh, so what from does from two is that I have a this lazy list where the head is two and uh, the tail is a supplier of, of, of from three. Okay? Then I call price on it and what you actually are you actually doing is uh, filtering the result of this supplier uh, with primes and uh, you are filtering with the head which is two. Okay? And then you, you call tail on it uh, the first time, tail mean evaluates the supplier, which is this, okay? And when you evaluate it and filter it, the head will be three, and then you, you are also carrying in this filter also the number three. And then you can recursively do this, so uh, uh, at the third step, the head will be five, and you are carrying in this uh, concatenation of filter, you see only the prime numbers. This is why I'm, uh, I, I'm uh, in a functional uh, uh, structure uh, keeping track of the prime number that I found so far. Make sense? Okay, so I guess if you keep this in mind and if you review the code, it will be clearer now. 
And uh, uh, as I said, you can use, uh, uh, you, you can iteratively find uh, all the prime number in this way, or you can use recursion. Uh, and in reality, uh, since Java 8, uh, we have two, two types of, uh, of iteration. Okay? You have uh, what I call the, the external iteration with uh, the thing that uh, you are used to, 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 to see since, uh, the, since the introduction of the lambda expression. And then uh, you have this, okay? which is an internal iteration, which is uh, fundamentally different. Why it is different? Uh, because uh, here you are in control of, of what's happening, and here the API is control of what's happening. Let me give you another example uh, using my, my daughter Sophia. When she was younger, at the end of the day, the, the, the room uh, was uh, full of her toys, and she had to put all her toys away. Okay? So when she was very young, I had to perform an external iteration. Sophia, what's in the ground? The doll. Okay, take the doll, put it on, on the box. What else is on the ground? The car. Okay, take the car, put it on the box. What else? The ball. Put the, put, take the ball, put it on the box. Um, I was externally iterating Sophia. I was driving her to, uh, one by one, operating the doors. Okay? At some point, finally, I've been able to say, Sophia, take all your toys and put them in the box. What's the difference here? There are two main differences. One is that I'm doing far less work, which is fine. <laughs> the second one is that now Sophia, now the API is in control. What, what does it mean? That uh, the API could internally do some op optimization for you, okay? Sophia could decide to take the ball with one hand, the dog with, it, with another hand, and put that together in the box. So she could decide of doing parallel processing. <laughs> uh, she could decide to take the, the ball first because it's closer uh, to, the, to the box and, and, and the car after because it's full. Okay? So she could do uh, 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 instruction reopening. Okay? This is done for you because you are not in control anymore of the flow. The API is in control of the flow, and of course you could do the same thing programmatically, but it will be a lot of effort, okay? You don't want to do this, you want the library, you want the framework to do this for you, okay? So this is the difference between, between external and internal iteration, but of course you also have a third way, which is uh, the way that is uh, uh, preferred normally by functional uh, uh, developer, which is recursion. Okay, so here I'm doing exactly the same thing, defining this small method in a recursive way. And uh, uh, I can use recursion also for a lots of uh, for a lots of uh, 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 nice algorithm. Uh, I don't know if you have if you have to do uh, the traversal of a tree. You normally never do it in a in an iterative way. You al always do it in a recursive way. Okay. And here I wanted to to give another example. I have a, a predicate that checks if a string is a palindrome or not in a recursive way. Okay. So. What this method does is, uh, okay, uh, stripping away, removing all the blank, all the non-letter space, all the, the non-letter characters uh, from the head, from the tail, and when, then when it reaches two char uh, at the very beginning and at the very end, it compares the two. If the two are, are different, you, are, you don't have a, a palindrome, it will return false. Uh, if uh, if uh, the two are the same, it will remove the, the very first and the very last by uh, changing the index and it will recursively call this uh, this is palindrome meter. Then if you reach a point where the, the, the two index touch each other, you know that you have found a palindrome and it, it will return true. Okay, so this is a, a very nice example uh, where recursion uh, uh, um, helps you to, to provide a simple implementation in, a, in an easy way. Uh, so let's try to, to put this as, uh, to work as usual. I have a stream of, of, of string and I wanted to check with the predicate if uh, if they are palindrome or not. Okay? 
So what happens here? Uh, yeah, okay, I have an example here. Uh, I'm using uh, this palindrome predicate. That is the class that I showed you before. Uh, if I try to give a run to this, everything works fine. Okay. But the problem is, what happens is uh, if I have a very oops, what happens if I have a very long string? <coughs> okay, this is something that I found somewhere in the internet. Uh, believe me, this uh, is a palindrome, and also it seems that it has some meaningful, uh, some meaning in English, if any, if I didn't read it. But anyway, uh, what do you expect if I try to use my predicate with this very long polyphony? Remember that it is recursively adding invocation on the step, right? So, yeah. So, the result, of course, will be a support. Okay? But we can use uh, tail recursion for that in order to avoid. You can use tail, but, well. This is tail recursive. You see, this is tail recursive. But the problem is that uh, Java doesn't have tail call optimization. Right? Uh, and indeed, uh, if you write exactly the same thing in, uh, in Scala, it works. Why? Because Scala has tail call optimization. Okay? So, Java doesn't have tail call optimization. Uh, so we have to to work around this. Okay, you you know what is the call optimization? If you have one method, uh, if you have one last statement in your, in your uh, uh, method that is passing the control to a different method, it's useless to put it on the stack. It's useless to make your step growing. You can just remove the the the. the the, the statement from your code, from your bytecode, of course the compiler should do this for you, and just see the control to to do to, to that method in this case. Okay? Uh, and this is the solution for the technical optimization. Uh, and uh, well many recursion is not uh, natively tail recursive, for instance of course, this is not. Why? Because the last operation is not this, but is the uh, addition, is the plus, right? But in many cases, there are uh, 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 there are some practices, some uh, 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 easy idea to transform a recursion in a tail recursion. Here, for instance, I'm just using an accumulator, and by using this accumulator. I'm uh, making this this method tail recursive. Okay, so you can do little transformation to transform uh, uh, a non tail recursive method in a tail recursive. Method. Okay, my original example was already tail rec recursive. The problem is Java doesn't have tail call optimization. What I can do about this? Uh, I can use something that in functional programming is called a trampoline. What is a trampoline? Uh, well, it's just a, a concatenation of function, okay? It's just that you, instead of adding your revocation on a stack, you linearize them, okay? So you have a function, but when you invoke this function, you are not returned with, with the first result, you are just returned with another function, then you call apply again and again and again, and at some point you reach a terminal function, and only at the point when you call apply, you will be returned with the result. Okay, so let's try to implement this in Java. Uh, I, I have uh, uh, this uh, telco interface, which is a, a, a supplier of a telco itself. Okay, and uh, I'm doing this also because it would be nicer to use the API. I will show you. Um, and then I have, uh, okay, this is uh, one of, of the intermediate functions. Okay. So when you invoke it, it will do this sequence of application of function. 
uh, and you cannot call result an ET neutron exception and it's not complete, it's an intermediate one. Okay? And then you have the uh, and then you have uh, 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 the terminal uh, implementation, which now is complete, will return the result, and uh, you cannot forget them. You cannot. Uh, it, it is, it is the last operation. Uh, you, you, there is nothing to, to, to call on it anymore. Okay? So let's try to put this at work. As I said, the, 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 the implementation is not so hard to uh, but it's somewhat understandable, uh, but the nice thing is that uh, the user of this uh, uh, of this small API or of this small utility will be allowed to use this in a very nice way. Let's try to change this to to use my uh, telco. So this will no longer return a boolean, but will return a telco of a boolean. Okay, and then uh, I didn't make you notice, but I have this done uh, uh, factory meter which will return a, it's, a, it's just a factory meter for the last function called the terminal code. Okay, so when I, when I can return a result, I, will, I can say done true. Okay, this will return the, the, the terminal call of the tail call. Uh, okay, let me import this, and I can do the same here. Okay, and here, as I said, a tape call is also a supplier of, of uh, itself, so it's very easy to make this a, a, a tape call of a bully, and you just have, as usual, to do this. Okay, and after that, you this is not returning no longer a Boolean, it's returning a take call of Boolean to trigger the, the, um, to trigger the uh, invocation of all the linearized function. You just call invoke here on this uh, and you are done. If you, are, if you try to rerun this, you will see that it works perfectly and also the very long string uh, which I used to, to trigger the, uh, the full the circular flow. Uh, uh, this time works fine. Okay. So another thing that I wanted to introduce, uh, but I guess I won't have I won't, I won't have time for this. Sorry, I want to leave a bit of time for question. So uh, I will go through this just quickly uh, without uh, doing any live code. But uh, the, the message here is that. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we all uh, love uh, dependent injection, right? Dependent injection is nice, it saves us a lot of time, but uh, sometimes you end up uh, with monsters like this. Raise your hand if you uh, find yourself in this situation. Okay, a few hands up. Uh, and, and what's the problem here? Uh, the problem is that uh, there are a few problem. The, the, the life cycle of your domain object doesn't belong to you anymore. Uh, uh, there is this uh, all your object, all your pojo belong to me syndrome that you typically have with the dependency framework. And uh, and it's up to the bug is something goes wrong, sometimes it's broken capsulation, and there is this complicated life cycle which again is not under your control. And and one of the hardest problems is that uh, uh, you often turn uh, <laughs> a compile time error in the runtime one. Okay, if something goes wrong with the dependency injection, you don't know it at compile time. It blows up your uh, your uh, your uh, 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 at runtime. Okay. So what I'm doing here, I'm going uh, quickly through this. Uh, I don't want to do this. Okay. Here I'm doing a naive attempt. I'm not using uh, a dependency injection. So of course, uh, what will happen if I try? To, oh, sorry, I, I didn't explain too fast. I didn't explain the context. I have an account, okay, uh, and which I do some operations. So 
bank operation, you open the account, you create it and debit it, okay? And then I need this uh, logger which logs all the operation that is uh, usually injected, injected, okay? Which is just a, a consumer of a stream, okay? So, of course, if you do this, if you have a debit instruction framework but use the new keyword, this will blow up with a no pointer exception because the dependency framework will not inject this. Uh, you can inject this uh, with a reader model, uh, but uh, you can do it more easily with just a function, okay? Or while, what I'm doing here, I just have a function that when it is invoked, will set the logger uh, and then uh, will perform all the operation, okay? So, I, I know I'm going fast, but I, I just wanted to show you again the winning point of laziness. Okay, with this technique, by using the reader model or by using a function, I'm, uh, I'm doing exactly the same thing that the Java 8 stream does. Uh, I'm describing all these operations, but I'm not performing them. I'm saying that I have an account, open it, uh, credit some money on it, take some money from it, but I'm not performing them. I, I, I don't need an instance of the logger at this point. Because I'm not executing the operation, I'm just describing them. And the only point when I need uh, the logger, the, the object that uh, depends, uh, that is a, a dependency of my function, is when I trigger the operation, okay? And without laziness, what's, what's, what's the problem of strictness? The problem of strictness is that the point when you define the operation is exactly the same point where the, the operation has performed, okay? And so this is the bottom line. Sometimes you don't want to do this. You want to describe the operation at some point, and at some later point you want to trigger them. And, and this is the very winning point of business. Uh, so, just, just uh, 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 the bottom line is, okay, Java is strict, if we did, Java is great, strictness is great, but laziness uh, is one more tool in your tool belt, so learn it and use it when it's useful, when you think it could be useful. It is really the ultimate form of, 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 of uh, uh, performance optimization. Uh, with laziness, uh, uh, you have uh, code that is more declarative in style, is more functional in style, and this also favors the separation of the concept. Uh, and of course, as you know, some algorithm can be implemented in a more elegant, in a more efficient way if you use laziness. And uh, as I was trying to uh, quickly explain, uh, sometimes you can just replace, rep uh, 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 replace sorry, uh, 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 dependency injection with just a full function application, which will work, uh, uh, or if it doesn't work, it blows up at compile time. So, uh, that, that's another good thing. So I think I have a few minutes for question now, and uh, I'm done. Sorry, uh, I, I rushed it a bit to last part. I am used to do this in one hour, but uh, uh, my my slide will be published online, so you can review them, and uh, we can talk offline also if you want. Thanks.